Last week, I analyzed a game between two chess masters. In this week's analysis, I'm going to be playing through one of my own games. This game was played in the Iowa Grades Championship back in November. I had the black pieces, and my opponent, a student of West High, had the white pieces. He was about 15 or 20 points lower rated than me, so not a huge jump in rating, so we were pretty much equal level. Up until this point in the tournament, I had been doing very well. I was a perfect 3 out of 3, and I had won my games in crushing manner against some less rated opponents than me. I was definitely in the front running for my section, and this game would be very important because I was playing somebody at my level that I would need to at least hold a draw as black. My opponent begins the game with d4, and here black has two options. They can play d5 or knight f6, which is what I play. My opponent plays bishop f5, I play e6, my opponent plays knight f3, and I play c5. This is known as the London system and it might be familiar to some of some lower rated players as a very annoying opening to play against and that really doesn't change when the format is one hour apiece. My opponent plays c3 reinforcing the center and I strike back in the middle with d5 and you get this what is called the Carlsbad structure with this, the pawns like this. My opponent forms this pawn triangle here putting all the pawns on important squares while still keeping mobility for the bishop and I put my knight here which is hitting the center and blocking the king from being checked if the bishop went to here. Here my opponent actually plays in an accurate move according to the computer. It play, he plays bishop d3 and this is a pretty standard move. It's, I've seen it online all the time but according to the computer it's an inaccuracy so who knew? I play bishop d6, trying to counteract white's powerful bishop that looks in on this diagonal, and he plays bishop gg3, which is a standard response. Now it looks like I can trade off this bishop here, but I can't, because h takes g3 is known to be very powerful for white, because they get this open line if I were to castle kingside, which is standard for the London system. So instead, I continue with what I have prepared against the London, just setting up in my system, playing castles kingside. My opponent brings his knight, knight b d2, bringing it into the game, maybe looking for a push into the center this way, or just trying to activate one of his inactive pieces. And here, I make a blunder on move 6. I blunder a whole piece with move bishop d7. So there are a variety of reasons or excuses I could give for this, but the real reason is I just was thinking too prophylactically, too far ahead, especially in the London system, which is a pretty low-key opening. And I just missed the fact that I can take right here and just win a piece. But fortunately, my opponent didn't do that. He blunders right back, goes 95. Now, I'm still not doing well. I surrendered at all the all the good moves I had made. I gave, gave those up by that blunder. But I'm not down a piece. And so in the game, I was sitting there and I was thinking. I was going into damage control mode, and so I decided to take here. And the idea is that even if he takes with the bishop, I'm going to take with the knight. And so he has to double his e-pawns. When I looked at this game further... This is an idea that happens in the London a lot, and this pawn, the justification is that this pawn is still really good, even though in the long term it will become weak. Here I make another inaccuracy by dropping my knight back to e8. I, I'm sure there are better moves, but once again, I'm trying to, trying to stem, the, stem the blood flow a little bit here and try and get back into the game that I know well rather than one that my opponent controls. My opponent plays f4. The engine doesn't like this because this bishop already reinforces this pawn, and so f4 really pacifies the bishop. I play f6, another inaccuracy, so that's three or four inaccurate moves in a row for me. And my opponent plays knight f3, activating a piece. 
Now, I see that this, I think here for a while, and I see that this part of the board is kind of clogged up. He doesn't want to take here because I can just reactivate my knight and kind of attack on his weaker light squares. So I decided to play queen b6. In response to that, he decides to play queen c2, which is the best move according to the computer. It hits this h7 pawn, threatening to win it, and it defends the b2 pawn. So I decide that if I can't have counterplay on the king side, he can't either. And I decide to shut everything down with the move e5. Now, it's debatable on whether or not this is a good move. Because on one hand, it does shut down this battery, which he spent so many moves preparing. But on the other hand, this pawn becomes very weak. This bishop is going to have trouble reactivating itself. And this knight has quite a journey to get back into the game because he can't hop here or here. So here my opponent thought for quite a while, which I, I was kind of, I kind of felt, I kind of felt like I was being psyched out. And he decides to play h4. And this move is ruled as not an inaccuracy as much as it's a mistake because I have this sequence. I can push my c4 pawn, winning a tempo on the bishop. He drops the bishop back to here and I can just win this pawn back. And now I'm up a pawn. Just straight up. My queen's in a good spot. And he might be getting a little bit overextended if I can kind of bliss my pieces and get behind his pawn structure here. So he plays queen d2. And in the game, I still have a pretty defensive mindset. Because, again, I, I realized that I made a mistake and I'm still trying to recover from that a little bit. But also, I can't get a piece over there to defend the queen. And it would just be inaccurate to drop the queen back. So I decided to take. My opponent decides to move his knight back here and take. In order to keep his castling rights active either direction. I think here for a while. And honestly, I don't know about this move. I moved my knight back to e7. The idea is, of course, to move the bishop here, and he can't break through with b3, but he has his knight there, and so if b3 happens, c takes, and it, then a takes, and my bishop is just kind of kind of not in a good spot. So he decides that this knight does not deserve to reroute over here, so he plays h5, which is, once again, a good move, getting active with the h pawn. Threatening to crash this pawn in on the flank and just shred through my pawn structure. So I play h6, blocking that. Also now, there's no resting place for the bishop if he goes here. He can't. He's, he's going to have to stay inactive for the time being. And my opponent castles queenside. This is pretty much him saying that he is going to want to launch an assault on my position from the king side. He's going to want to play his bishop somewhere, probably back here. He's going to want to play g4 and then f5 and just try and break through my king side. And he has every right to do so. He's got more activity. My pieces are a little bit tangled up. I got this weird Tetris piece here. And so I got to find a move. So here I thought for quite a while. I've thought for about six, seven minutes, which is quite a bit considering the fact that you only have an hour total. And I, I'm still kind of trying to, trying to calm down from that mistake very early on. And so I think, what do I need first? What is my worst piece and how can I make it better? And so I come up with knight c7. And this connects my rooks, which is good. It also moves this knight off the back rank because he has no prospects on the king's side. So he's going to be going over here at some point, maybe here. We'll have to see what he does. It's just a good move to reactivate my pieces. He drops his bishop back, also reactivating his bishop, and hit, hitting this pawn if my rook has to move in the future. And I go here, I'm thinking for a while, and I just want to take the attack back to him. And I think, I, I think and I think, and I thought for about 15, 20 minutes, so a third of my time, 
how can I launch the attack on his king? Because I, I'm not going to win a, an attack on the king's side. I have to attack on the queen's side. And so I decide to sacrifice the pawn with rook c8. My opponent sees this move and he instantly snaps up the pawn, which the engine wants him to do. But now I have this tempo and now my knights are going to start running. So I can tempo his bishop and the bishop drops back to here. Then I can bring my rook up. Then he puts his knight back to f3 once again. And I here have an option. I theoretically could pull a romantic era grandmaster and just try to sacrifice a pawn to deflect the bishop. But instead, I rule the fact that this pawn will be more valuable going here to b5 and then here once we move the, get this bishop out of the game. He sees that, of course, and he plays a3, which is the best move, and this is, creates what's called a bind on b4. And a bind means that you just have two pawns looking there, so even if a pawn is supported by another pawn, there's no getting through that square. And so there goes that plan. But the thing with a3 is it weakens the b3 square. And so now I'm going to target that. I go here. And now I'm threatening a fork. Knight b3 check wins the bishop. So here he thinks for a good while, enough for me to go up and get some water and come back. And he decides to play bishop back to e3. And that's an inaccuracy according to the computer. But at this point, I'm getting kind of sick of what the computer has to say. This is just how the game is going to be. It's going to be inaccurate. We're both 1100 rated. And so here, I play knight b3 check, and my knight is nestled nicely in between these pawns on a powerful square. He plays his king up to here, which is an admittedly kind of strange move. I fully expected him to go king b1, and then... The king is just generally safer. But he decides king c2 is worth it. And so I move my knight to the side. And my idea is to go here. Move my knight here. And if he decides not to trade, then I want to nestle my knight right in here, trying to get behind his pawns. He puts his knight <coughs> there. Now I follow through with that plan. And I decided to go here. There's no taking on this because my very, my worst piece is defending it. So at least that. Right now I have my light squared bishop defending my two backwards pawns. And now these knights lock into the, into the white position a little bit well. And they're going to be kind of my source of salvation. So he decides, he thinks here for a while and decides that it's not worth it to go after these knights right now and he goes rook g1 and rook g1 was a move that I didn't even consider I I um, looked over a lot before starting this knight a6 idea but rook g1 is a terrifying prospect which is to go here get this trade and get a really powerful rook and try and run his pawn here eventually kind of get his pieces behind the rooks and continue that kingside attack that he had planned for so long. And so I play knight to e4 right there. And my knight is quite good there, actually. The engine doesn't want me to play that move right away. But my idea was if he takes right here and then I take with check, he takes... If he wants to, he might not want to expose his bishop that well, badly, but I can go right here. And there's a fork, and there's nothing he can do. I'm going to win a, win a bishop or an exchange. And my opponent blunders here. He plays g4. And the engine has decreed that that move is premature. The engine says that after I play b4, pushing my b-pawn into that 
buying here that I'm better. I I haven't analyzed this game to an extent that I've analyzed some of my games, so I didn't really look into why this is good. But this, I don't know, it just feels arbitrary. It just feels like I am just throwing a pawn in there, and I wouldn't have found that move if I had analyzed this for hours on end. And at this time, I have about 20 minutes left on my clock. He has about 36, so he's got built up a significant time advantage, and I'm on the defensive. So I decide to chop this, and so there's nothing hitting this pawn anymore. Bishop takes back, and I'm going to try and just turtle up with my... These pieces really aren't doing a lot, and I'm just going to try and cozy up around my king and sustain my defensive. And so I take this, which is very scary, because it opens up a line for him directly into my king. Now his rook can congregate there, and... It is going to be a very powerful threat. I bring my rook back, continuing to turtle up. My idea was there's not nothing here. I'm gonna I'm counterattacking this, so he has to make another inactive move here with his bishop or something along those lines. And in hindsight, this move is very strange. He puts his rook back. Now, I can only assume that he didn't like the idea of my knight ending up here, but his bishop is on this line, and it really can't move off of this diagonal, and so it defends that. And now I'm, I'm starting, I see that the fact that that was not a great move, and I decide that I'm going to try and chip away at some of his offensive assets. I decide to go bishop b8, which isn't actually a horrible move according to the engine. The engine thinks it's an inaccuracy, but my idea is to go rook here and try and mount pressure and chop away at the pawn. He goes here. I go king h8. And I decided just getting out of the way of this, of this long diagonal here, and move my king away from danger. The only pin there would be if this pawn moved, and there's no pawn breaks anywhere, so that pawn isn't going anywhere. He decides it's time to kick my knight out, and I decide that I would like to trade that knight off. Now it looks slightly strange for, for sure. This knight is my most powerful piece. But I have low time, and I am no longer holding illusions of a win. I'm just trying to draw this game. So I play rook d7 with the idea that after takes and takes, there is a powerful square for me right here. And even if he puts a rook here, I'm still going to go here. And if takes, then I take with check, and this pawn is going to be very powerful. And probably this is winning for black. My opponent plays rook g2. And it looks slightly strange, but he is going to try and double up his rooks eventually. And it's not a horrible move. Right now, the engine has this evaluated as plus 0.5, meaning white is slightly ahead in this game. The engine has jumped around a lot, but it has been not in my favor. It has been either a draw or it has been completely winning for white. So I'm kind of happy to be in this position right now. And that's how my mood was reflected in the game. Because right here I thought, hey, this might be not too bad for me. I find this strange move, rook c7, still trying to utilize this bind and also just holding a waiting move. I can go here after if this trade happens. My bishop will be very happy with that, actually, because I can put my rook here and get this bishop, and my bishop can kind of capitalize on white's weak light squares. And then my opponent thought, and he started to think, and he thought, and he thought, and he ran his time all the way down 
I don't know what he was looking at. It was about lunchtime, maybe he was hungry, but it was in this position that we agreed to a draw. He just decided that he can't give up anything without going too much and ending up surrendering what advantage he had. Now the engine is ruthless. It's decided that this move is very good and then I am going to end up getting steamrolled by that double file and the bishop pair. So engine still says there's play here but my opponent ran his time down trying to find an idea and ended up not finding it and I having blundered a piece on move six and struggled to come back I readily agreed to the draw and that was it so this was round four of five in the Iowa class championship and my opponent uh, I forget what um, section he was in I think he was either in ninth grade or eighth grade section um, this was the pivotal, pivotal game for me because if I had lost this there was still a chance that I would lose my section the 11th grade section and that didn't happen I was able to hold this draw and so even though I lost my fifth round to a national master I still was able to win the Iowa 11th grade section and that was my first ever win so I still accredit my defensive effort especially counterattacking and holding mentally tough here in a bad position where I really messed up early I hope you enjoyed this game analysis. I thought I'd try something new instead of doing a Grandmaster game. I thought I'd do one of my own games. I hope you learned something new. And until next time, I'm Johannes Bovers. See you later.